People have been asking for this one for quite a while, so let's just fucking do it. My name's Mark, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about Slick 50. Oh, here we go again. So, <laughs> we're going to talk not just about Slick 50, we're going to talk about oil additives full stop, because... If I do this video, they'll say, yeah, but what about, and what about, and what about? Right, so when oil manufacturers like Castrol and people like that make oils, uh, Yamalube, uh, Motorex, stuff like that, they have a package, what they call an oil package, so they use a base, be it synthetic, um, uh, be it just plain old crude uh, mineral oil, stuff like that. Um, so basically you have your bulk of your oil and then they add things in like anti-foaming agents. Uh, why? Because everything's churning around in your engine and fucking oil's been flung around everywhere. Your pump's churning away and all of it and you don't want your oil to foam because that basically ingests o uh, oxygen and under compression oxygen is, uh, oxygen air is compressible which means that the, uh, basically your oil isn't doing exactly what it should do. So anti-foaming agents the ability to not trap air is a good thing. Also have corrosive inhibitors, um, corrosive inhibitors in certain ways, so to neutralize acids, uh, carbon stuff will make carbonic acid and stuff when it dissolves in your oil. Um, and you know, because there's high temperatures, oil you know burns at the end of the day. Uh, you know, you are always going to have some kind of burning and oil leakage on your cylinders, your cylinder walls, you know, your scraper rings do their best, but there's always some oil left over and some of that will be burned eventually. Your valve guides will slightly leak a bit of oil. You've got your crankcase breather, so because of windage. Windage is basically, your crank's going like this, flinging oil everywhere. There's an oil mist, and because of emissions and all the rest of it, what they do is they have your crankcase breather going to your airbox, so it goes back into the engine to be burned, because it's better being burnt um, then it is just pure oil flinging in everywhere, hence what kills two strokes. Um, but even then they try and burn as much oil as they can. Um, but anyway, uh, you have antioxidants, um, you have uh, corrosive inhibitors, anti-foaming agents, detergents. Detergents are what allow the actual, because um, there is always condensation in the engine, and it allows the um, oil in a sense to basically, the detergents allow the water um, so there isn't a separation there, so you don't have a pool of water on top of your oil. Uh, basically it allows it to basically kind of mix and dissolve in there. Unless you ask Dell, you know, with his uh, super slippy um, drill uh, fluid. Cutting fluid, that's the word. Dripping with autism. Um, so we're going to take Slip 50 as the example and we're going to talk a bit about that bearing friction test, which I absolutely fucking hate because everyone does it wrong. <laughs> we'll get to why in a minute. But so when you look at Slick 50, it comes, if you go Alfred's, it comes generally the one you can find is the 500 millilitres, half a litre. It does state that you are meant to replace this 500 millilitres with your oil. So if you're meant to put 2,500 or two and a half litres of oil into your engine, don't put two and a half litres in, put two litres in and then make up the rest of it with this. What is it? 75%. To 80% oil, so it's just fucking oil. 1% uh, of this, whatever it is, people are saying PTFE and stuff like that. I haven't read that, but we'll go with that in a second. 10 um, to 15% lithium soap and all the rest of it. Detergents, that's pretty much what your detergent is. Uh, helps also clean carbon and gunk and shit off and all the rest of it. But basically, nearly all of this is just fucking oil. It's a tiny 1% oil. It's a slightly greater than 1%. Um, I don't know, it says less than, I think it says less than 1%, I can't remember, I just read it about an hour ago. Um, basically you're getting fuck all, so out of your, same thing again, Trebo text type stuff, out of your 500 millilitres, 1% of that, so 5 millilitres is going to be this stuff. Now it does say on motorbikes, if you, uh, the concentration, so if you've got a 1.4 litre Corsa, I just chose that, 1.4 litre engine, it's got four litres of oil in it and you're meant to add 500 millilitres, five millilitres of which is the magic stuff that does all the anti-wear. Which means basically it's one eighth of this is one eighth of your oil. Um, four litres to 500 millilitres, that's one eighth. And uh, a hundredth of this 
is the actual stuff that's meant to do the sexy PTFE, slippy slippy stops wearing and all the rest of it. So you're getting fuck all that's meant to be spread around your entire engine. Again, this thing can't, you know, pick what it wants to coat. It'll coat the entire fucking thing. Your oil filter, I don't know how small these particles are, so I don't know how much of this stuff is actually trapped by your oil filter. It depends on your oil filter and whatever. We'll have to get someone actually look under the microscope see if you can actually see some of these particles or whatever. Um, the other problem is, is, is if it is PTFE, PTFE melts at 327, it's a thermos of plastic. Um, what is PTFE? It's poly, um, polytetrafluorinethylene or whatever it is, PTFE. Um, melts at 327, there are places in your engine that are a lot hotter than that, even when they wear the oil goes briefly. Um, on motorcycles it says put 250 millilitres for a small motorcycle, so I'd imagine anything under 400, 500 cc. Uh, or maybe even small than that. It says small lawn equipment and small, so maybe a 125s so only 250 millilitres. For medium sized motorcycles, 600, stuff like that, it's probably 350. And then it says big bikes, your litre bikes, and all this. it says use the full 500. Which is strange because for your 1.4 litre course that's got 4 litres of oil instead of 2, they're saying add the same. No one's done the maths here, obviously. But what is my problem with the bearing test? You might have seen it before, it's a bearing, they have a dowel pin, a hard dowel pin, and they try and wear them against each other. What do I have against that? W30. We're going to test it at full strength, and then we're going to mix it into some 10W30 to see if it helps reduce friction of the 10W30. The bearing with motor coat on it is to the right. The bearing with 10W30 is on the left. As you can see, there is a very, very small amount of scoring on the bearing that had motor coat on it. Very impressive. So this product also claims that water will not wash it away. So let's go ahead and test that claim. It is a, a fucking a, a, it's a ATSM test, Matt. What the fuck are you talk, what the hell are you talking about? How can that test be bogus? The test itself is a very good test. So basically what you do is you have a bearing or a bearing surface, you'll have this attached to a motor, this is doing its spinny spinny trick, and then you'll have a dowel that is attached on a lever, so this is your fulcrum, <laughs> like so, and then you'll have a mass pulling down on it like this, you'll have a mass, and this is a, um, a class 2, <laughs> fucking hellfire, this is a class 2 because you're putting your effort in here, you can do it by hand or you can do it with a mass, it doesn't really matter. And in the middle is your um, load. And basically what they do is they have a little tray like this with whatever fluid in it. And as this whips around it picks up your oil, your slick 50 or fucking whatever. And then basically this bearing here, uh, this dowel pin, you can measure the wear. Why is this bogus? Well, it's because of this liquid here. You'll see Project Farm doing it. You'll see loads of people doing it. It's this fluid here that's wrong. No one does a life test of these things. So this is brand new out the bottle. You run it through an engine, and that's what you should do. You should put Slick 50 into your engine, run that for a thousand miles, and then do the test. Do the wear test. And then, you know, run your Castrol in it for... 500 miles brand new or a thousand miles take a sample out then run the engine with your slick 50 for a thousand miles take that sample out and then do the wear test of them this is a way that they cheat this is a way that they make it look fantastic the fact of the matter is is that your castrol or your repsol your yamalube whatever has more to do than just wear like i say it has to basically last the life of how long your intermissions are for your oil. So if it says replace it every 5,000 miles, does the oil slick 50 and shit like that last 5,000 miles? Well, looking at it, this stuff boils away. You know, the PTFE, if that's what they're using, fucking dies at 327 degrees. How much of your oil gets up to 327 degrees? The, the oil gallery passage that goes past your exhaust port in a lot of heads does that when you're ragging the shit out of your engine get over 327 degrees the other thing is as well is if you look at ptfe you go onto wikipedia look at ptfe it says 
that PTFE, um, the bonds are very, very resilient between the fluoride and the carbon and uh, in the polymer chain. If you look at that, it says there's one thing that basically kind of interrupts that. They are alkaline metals like magnesium and aluminium. <laughs> So I, I don't know, I'm not an oil expert, but I don't know actually what PTFE, does it actually even work in an engine? The other thing is as well is the coefficient of friction for a PTFE, I can't believe it is, it's something like 0 0.04. And um, that DLC and BEC, they're the two things that have got better coefficient, a lower coefficient of friction than PTFE. It's one of the third best that we know on the surface of the earth. This is why geckos don't stick to it. This is why all sorts, this is why it's non-slip frying pans, blah, 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 blah. Now, just having this shit swimming around in your oil, does that mean that it welds itself to your bearings? Does it mean it welds yourself to your crankshaft, your aluminium parts? Fucking God knows, we will do a test. You can quite easily just soak apart or, like I say, run it through and test two crankshafts or test two bearings. One that's been treated over a thousand miles at temperature and one that hasn't in an actual engine. Pull them out and actually look at the coefficient of friction. Test it. Has this bearing got a slippery surface on it or has it not? Slippery, super slippery nature. Has that PTFE just fucking shit the bed and see you later sign, aren't they? You know, these tests you have to... Um, there are official tests that you can kind of cheat on, you know what I mean? Like I say, by not diluting Slick 50, or not dilute Project Farm's a fucker for it, and there are other people who don't think about what they're actually testing. Yes, Slick 50 will perform better than Castrol, but you don't put that much in. Why don't Slick 50 make their entire own oil? I don't know if they do, but if their stuff is so shit hot, why don't they just make an oil and try and take on Cashel directly instead of an, ad an additive? You know what I mean? There's something ropey there. It's a bit like aftermarket exhaust, and I did that video about aftermarket exhausts. Yamaha have to design an entire fucking bike and the exhaust system. It is quite easy to come along and just say, well, we'll just tweak just the exhaust and make it a bit better. It's easy to do that. Um, but like I say, the fact of the matter is, is they're relying on the fact that your oil is performing the real job and they're just adding bits to it. And like I say, a lot of these oils have these packages pretty much already fucking down anyway. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.